In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we come to celebrate this Mass, we first take a moment to call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth. Peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King. O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand, the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity. They may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to you, shepherds, who mislead and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the shepherds who shepherd my people. You have scattered my sheep and have driven them away. You have not cared for them, but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will gather the remnant of the flock from all the lands to which I have driven them, and bring them back to their meadow. There they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them, so they will no longer fear and tremble. 
and none shall be missing, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days Judah will be saved. Israel will dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord our justice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In burdened pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, he who made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh, abolishing the law with its commandments and legal claims, that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two thus establishing peace, and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross, and putting enmity to death by it. He came and preached peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him we have both have access in one spirit to the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers, and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in the boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them. For they were like a sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, today we have very, very stern readings. And in many ways, the prophet's talking about the lack of shepherding done by the shepherds. 
And it's very much been in vogue these days to criticize leadership, whether it be in government, in the church, teachers, priests, whatever, to criticize leadership. But this is not exactly what Jeremiah is doing in our first reading. Yes, he is criticizing the leadership, but we need to recognize that he is in a different era, a different age in the Old Testament. And Jeremiah, rather than just criticizing leadership, he is recognizing the failure of human leadership, the failure of the kings, the failure of the priests in that time. And thus he promises that there will be a faithful shoot from the stump of Jesse, that there will be this new shepherd, this new leader that will govern the people Israel. And of course he is talking about the Messiah, Jesus. And he is preparing the world for the coming of Christ. Now granted, the people in the Old Testament thought that Christ would be this great king, this great leader who would restore Israel and would restore all things both economically and religiously. But when Jesus came, he was all this, but he was so much more. In fact, we see this happening in our Gospel reading today where Jesus has all these people in front of him coming and going and he takes his apostles to a deserted place. He basically goes away from all the people. And when the people come and find him, he of course has pity for them and teaches them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. But in many ways, it was Christ's intention in his mission as the Messiah not to consolidate all power to himself, but to found the church. And that you would have his apostles as representing the true shepherd, which is Christ but that Christ would be able to shepherd his flock through the church, through the sacraments, through the bishops and priests. And in many ways, this has continued to our day and has continued in a miraculous way. But it isn't to say that there isn't room for improvement and there isn't room for us to be more faithful. But the thing is this, we need to work with our bishops, with our pastors. We need to support them. There is no leader who is so much greater than the people. In fact, in many ways, the church has only been two steps ahead of culture. And we get the leaders that we deserve. When we point out the flaws of our leadership, we have three fingers pointing back at us. And I think it's important for us to recognize that we are truly in this together, both in the malady and in the possibility of salvation and healing. And thus, we need to support and love our leaders, our bishops, so that they can be the best of bishops, the best of leaders. In our second reading today, we see St. Paul to the Ephesians. And he is talking to us how we have come near to the blood of Christ, but that Christ has come to abolish the law with its commandments and legal claims, that he might create himself one new person in place of two, thus establishing peace, and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death, that in this new era, we are being governed by Christ and his love. We are not some legalistic society. We are not able to do it on our own. We need the church. We need the sacraments in order to do it. It was quite tragic yesterday I saw a video on YouTube, and it was a series of recorded phone calls to our own bishop, basically ripping him a new one for the things that have been happening in the cross. And I was stunned at what people thought that they were entitled to say to the bishop. The anger, the malice, the judgment, the unwillingness to lift a finger to work with him, to help him, just blowing him out of the water. That does real damage to our bishops. It's definitely taken a great toll these past couple of months on our own. And I think for us, if we think that just blowing people out of the water is being pastoral, then we don't understand who our shepherd is. If we think that living in anger is somehow righteous and holy, then we're missing completely what Jeremiah is showing us today, where yes, he preaches the truth, but he also preaches great hope in the coming of Christ. He preaches a way for all of us to be holy and to support one another. And if we think somehow 
We don't need the church. We don't need obedience and faithfulness. Things are pretty messed up in us. Because the Lord is our shepherd, there is nothing we shall want. And in many ways, my brothers and sisters, if we are desiring an earthly ruler to be like Jesus, to be perfect, to be God, then we are wanting something. If we are wanting certain things to be certain ways, then we are wanting something. I think it's very important for us to recognize that we can have the worst of bishops, the worst of priests, and still be holy. That it's through the via negativa oftentimes that we learn the most. And Christ is working all things to the good. He is working all things for our good and for our salvation. And even in these days, it's hard to know God's will. It's hard to know how he works through human frailty. But we believe that he's working all things for the good. And it's truly sowing the seeds of faith in us. Thus, my brothers and sisters, we need to be part of the flock that the Lord has put us in. We need to love those sheep who are around us, our brothers and sisters. We need to be discerning and listening to the call of our good shepherd, to the call of the shepherds that he has put into place. But most of all, if this is truly going to work, the sheep have to work with the shepherd. The shepherd has to work with the sheep. And in these days, it's so important that we have this desire to work with our shepherds, to work with our brothers and sisters' sheep, that we realize that we are truly in this together. So as we pray this Mass today, we pray in a special way for bishops and pastors and priests. We pray for leadership in our world. And we pray that this culture of blowing others out of the water, thinking somehow that that is true charity, may truly come to be converted and redeemed in the blood of Christ, and that we may recognize the true charity that we are called to have and the way that we are truly called to work together in the name of Christ. But most of all, let us believe and know that God is working all things for the good. And even though that is hard to see sometimes, we know that he is working the greatest good in us this day. So let us collaborate with him by living this commandment of love and by truly being the flock that he is calling us to. God bless you. As we come to this Mass, let's profess that faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was encountered the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and a life to the world to come. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, as we come to this Mass, we offer our prayers and petitions. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop William, all bishops, priests, deacons, all who serve in the church and our communities, that we may truly be the one flock of Christ and support one another in true charity and prayer that we all may be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for all those who are sick and suffering, all those who have hope, those who do not believe in God and those who care for them. We pray for those who have been scandalized by members of the church, that in their sufferings they may recognize the true shepherd and what the true church is all about. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish communities, our own families. We pray that we may have a greater desire to be brothers and sisters and that in our love and zeal for the Lord, 
you may have that same love and zeal for the sake of one another. And for our bishops and priests, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all those who have died, all those who will die this day. We pray in a special way for Ebi Marcotte, for whom we offer this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers. Help us to be ever more faithful to you, that we may recognize the ways that you call us to be holy, to be one, and to, in that unity to learn faithfulness through obedience to your cross and obedience to those who have been placed in authority over us. Help us to truly see our leaders as brothers and sisters in the Lord as well, that in great charity we may help them to follow you as you call them to. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all, his holy church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us to Redeemer, to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As an exaltation, we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. But through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. And gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen, grace, to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kindness to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace, O Lord, be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Just by way of announcements, remember to get your House of Mercy tickets for the August 4th fundraiser for the Women's Shelter. Uh, that would be great. But anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful day. And remember, we have the Civil Rose Ceremony for Pro-Life uh, here Monday morning with a 7.30 rosary and then 8 a.m. Mass, and then we'll do the Civil Rose Ceremony after Mass. God bless all of you, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.